life. You know the battle we go through life. We ask for chances for it. Chance equal our strike. Chance do it there. We should win. Let it be by the cold. Faith in the honor hell high. We should lose. Stand by the road. Chill, the winners go by. Day by day. We get better, better. So we can't be beat. Welcome back, everybody. When I say welcome back, I would like to be in a different world right now because that was a total embarrassment. But before we get talking about that murder on that green field, let everybody introduce yourself. I got your boy, Lewis House, the one to be athlete. What else we got over here? I'm um, a <coughs> runner, man. I'm just here fucking embarrassed about what we saw. I'm Nico Babak like my team. They embarrassed me. I got attacked by East Coast. It's it's bad. I can say right now my 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 best reaction to this would be um, we got a long road ahead of us. I'll say that. A very long road. And I think when when your head coach comes out and says that, like Nothing he said was very positive. Again, just neutral and normal. But like he's just like, yeah, we just weren't getting after it and going after him. But like, why not? Why didn't you have them have a playbook within that time period that give them confidence to do the things right? So again, that was just um, what I seen and heard was. Again, Matt Rule not doing what a good coach is supposed to do, which is have his team uplifted before that point. And, hey, if they lose, they know they went out guns blazing. But the way that they lost, it seemed like they were, like, confused and discom discombobulated, you know, starting the game. Yeah, they didn't even look like they showed up, honestly. You're muted, Ron. Got Damn, a fart in the back. That's how bad it was. <laughs> nah, I was. It was a long day Saturday. I couldn't even watch it, but each time I turned it on, we either got scored on or had a punt. So that's how I knew the game was happening. So mad. But I did hear the only touchdown on the radio. So if you didn't get shut out, I'll give him that one. Right. Well, I was really close with my score. I think my score, I said it was 42-14, so 45-7, man, that was, whew, man, the big play that I remember, for me at least, is when my player, my white black mamba, because he's a Caucasian guy, okay, you guys get the joke here, he's no longer a good joke anymore, because he got snapped on the whole game, I no longer have confidence in these corners, I said they were D1, I meant D1 double A, because D1 triple A, or whatever the hell the lower level is, because no, that was not it that last game, everybody was down and out, and the big play that I specifically seen, like I said, was, um, I don't know who the receiver was for Michigan, but he caught it off the back of the helmet of Isaac Giffords, uh, of Nebraska helmet, and then he did the the uh, SpongeBob ripped his pants down all the way to the ground, and you know at that point it was just over. I think at that that was the 14 points, and then from that point it was just the onslaught to what the hell happened after that. Yeah, I think that was Roman Wilson. Yeah, it was he snagged? Yeah. That's gonna be like on his NFL highlight tape. Nebraska's not notorious for being on other people's NFL highlight tapes. Oh yeah, we're always on the reverse side of the highlight tape. <laughs> getting the, snagged on or getting crisscrossed. I remember the first one that I that I had stuck in my memory was uh, the last time Nebraska went to a legitimate bowl game, and uh, when they went to that bowl game with Bo Pelini, and uh, and remember who we played. South Carolina. Who played for South Carolina that year, Ron? What's his name? Was it Alfredo? 
Alfonso. No, not Alfonso. What's the almost? He's a receiver. Who? What was his name? Uh, Alshon. Yeah, Alshon Jeffrey, the six six phenom. Right, he got ejected for all that shit that he threw on the field. Excuse me. Oops. <laughs> It was bad because, again, there was no way that those corners were going to stop him. Um, that kind of what it made me remember was um, him catching the ball over, you know, what we thought were NFL corners. I think that was when Prince of Mucamara and all of them were playing on the team and stuff like that, if I remember correctly. He was doing it to all of them, too. So it wasn't even no 6'6 receiver this time. It was just people who were just way stronger and way faster and way more prepared to play that game. I did predict it last week. We did get number two, though. Yes. Yes, you did predict that. Yeah. That is one moment play I want to bring up is when we went for it on fourth down and short or whatever instead of kicking a field goal. And I think that set the tone of us just getting and a two. Hmm. They thought we were going to do something with it, but we got shut out, didn't do anything till the fourth, and then that was it. They said, Lewis House, we're going to raise you that 14 points, and we're going to bundle it all together and bundle these corn huskers up into a bundle of corn husks. Toss them on the side of the road, Patrick Mahomes style. Call these guys Patrick McToilets. <laughs> Because they, yeah, it was not good. So, yeah, very, I guess, easy way to analyze that game. I'm pretty sure everybody in Cornhusker Nation is kind of embarrassed, but we kind of expected this. And I think the low-key hope was is that we kind of showed a little bit more resilience, and there was no resilience at all. Like, it was just from 15 minutes, start of the first quarter, <laughs> One second to the end of the fourth quarter. <laughs> Straight up dominance at all facets of the game. It was rough. It Very was so rough. Bad. They should have had rough. dogs barking on the sideline for how rough it was out there. Ha 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 ha. Great joke for the beginning of the show, everybody. So now that we've got done with our bloody reactions and our moment plays of what we remember for that. We're going to get into talking about some of the stats and some of the players that we remember from last game now. Welcome back everybody. We're coming in hot to talk about these stats right now. When I say stats, man, it was pure hot garbage. When I say pure hot garbage, I mean pure hot garbage because Nebraska got it told up on them. I said 300 yards, man, I don't know what you guys looked up, but they definitely got 300 yards plus a little bit of change put on that, if I remember correctly. But what stats do you guys remember from the game, if you have any, other than, you know, being murdered hard on the field? Harburg was going to go for two touchdowns. He threw a pick, first play, wasn't it? Yeah. Did, like hit the lineman or something? Yeah, or hit the fat guy. In the air? Either way, it was horrible. But no one did anything. Uh, J.J. McCarthy looked uh, close to perfect on his passes. Missed four, but either way, we just got ran through. Um... I don't even know where to even pick it out. Oh my! The only play I see was the what's it called? Fleeks, Josh Fleeks. He's the one that saved us from the shutout. So he should be a starter next week, like they did uh, do from New Jersey, Lionheart, Lionheart. <laughs> That's, that guy should be the number one player for the rest of the season. Hilarious, the Ron Kellogg of this season. Shout out my boy Ron Kellogg. Hey, we going to get my boy on here. I got his number still. You still got his number, Lewis? Yeah, I still got Ron's number. I'm going I'm to I'm try and get him on here so we can talk about that play. That was the last great play Nebraska ever had. <laughs> <And> that's, 
Hilarious. Nico, you got any stats for us, man? I mean, I thought we were going to hold them under 100 yards rushing. We held Corum under 100 yards, <laughs> but then they just let every fucking other person run on us for, like, an extra 50 yards. Yeah, it was so, bad. If I'm looking at this correctly, they had 249 rushing yards. Yeah. Nebraska had 106. Yep. One thing I will say good that came out of the game is Nebraska had good yards per play. It just didn't equal to anything. Like, it wasn't equaling to touchdowns. It was just equaling to three and outs and turnovers. They had six yards, six, six and a half yards pretty much per play. It's not that bad. But they also got murdered on the first downs and the third down and the fourth down conversions. And just total plays in general, Michigan ran 25, 30 plus plays more than them. That's yeah. a pretty significant part of the game. Yeah. And even crazier, Michigan had no penalties that whole game. So we wasn't popping pads at all to make them get off any of their counts or trainings or anything like that. No penalties, loss of yards. Nebraska, though, on the other hand, Nebraska had about about 30 yards of penalties, and we had four. That's pretty much one each quarter. Same, sh- sh- different show, pretty much. Yeah, Michigan had the ball for, like, 17 more minutes. Than right. It was, but, I mean, again, these are the things that we expect, and I think that that would have changed a lot because, again, the, like, the plays that were successful, it shows in the yards per play. It shows in that that, like, we can get yardage on them, but it's like you have to game manage it right, and you have to make sure that you're calling the right plays and using the right players in certain situations because Michigan wasn't using all of their star players that whole game. You know, they were using specific players that were, like, beating specific Nebraska players that they knew were weak. Like, they were picking on specific things, and the run game being that D-line and that linebacker pack, like I said, what did I say? Out of everybody on the field, I think those are going to be the biggest liabilities of that front seven. The corners are D1, but the other, you know, seven or eight people that may be out there not in that DB system are going to be liabilities out there. And then I think that's what translated into the DBs being a liability. So it just made it to where the defense just counteracted each other and, and made it to where it just wasn't going to be cohesive at that point. So for total yardage, by the way, Michigan put up 436 yards on us. Okay, so okay, that's that's bad, right? Guess how many yards we put up? 305 yards. Okay, not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. That's not that far away. Dude, that's literally, you know, if we would have had, let's say, out of those drives, man, I wish they, I wish they took count of drives and stuff like that but let's just say we had two more good drives you know we could have scored a couple more points I think I don't think we would have beat them I just think we would have put up a bigger fight <laughs> kind of like a kid kind of like a kid getting kidnapped I don't expect you to beat up the kidnapper I expect you to at least give him a good scratch on their face <laughs> probably not a good thing to say on YouTube but that's the analogy we're going to run with tonight so now that we have kind of that thought process of the stats out of the way, what are some of the stick-out players that you guys remember from this last game? Um, I think you called it right away, the, that reception, Roman Wilson. He just set off the tone and just had two touchdowns, I believe. Hmm. Or not even know what. Either way, he just... Did work on us. Um, another stat or another key player was uh, Heinrich. He had he led the team in tackles, but then again, we were out on the field on defense more than the offense. So, of course, they're going to get more tackles on there. And then I saw my boy Bushini with the tackle. Right. He saved the touchdown. I don't Bushini, know Bushini, that, Bushini. Yeah, I'm always going to give love to the punter. Hilarious. Out here kicking and tackling. That was a so. forced tackle. <laughs> it was either that or give your life up. 
give your life to the yeah. Lord after the game. Yeah. That's what that tackle yeah. was. Ron, what's going on with Alvano? My boy's not doing it right now. I don't think he had a chance. Oh, no, he missed four. Ron, stop Man, putting that magic it. drug in his like burritos. One for four or something in the field goal chances. Yeah, step it up. I didn't even, like I said, I didn't even watch it, so I don't even know when he missed it. I'm surprised they put him on the field. I'm telling you, once he gets that sponsorship with that Willardo, he's just gonna, he's gonna come back and start making them. Yeah, he's 25% right now. Man. Our picker just gave up after. <laughs> no, I don't even know. The wind wasn't even blowing hard. It wasn't even bad weather or anything like that. I think it was just the fear that they actually were getting really, really close to blocking a lot of those attempts. So Probably. It was... I actually had eyes on the game for most of it. I was, like, doing other stuff. But, yeah, it was, it was bad. I kind of just didn't want to watch the other Big Ten games that were going on. So I had to stay on it. And watch our team get mutilized in front of everybody. So, yeah, that was kind of the the highlights for me and the players for you guys. But my big player, like I said during the pregame, was Big J.J. McCarthy. I told you, my dude's coming for that mother clucking Heisman, and he really, really wants it bad. So he's like, on these weak teams, I got to put up stats. And when he says he put up some stats, man, my dude put up some stats. Let me just tell you a couple of these numbers. Dude went 12 for 16. What? That's crazy. Two touchdowns. What? The only stat that didn't really stick out to me. And funny enough, I think a better quarterback on a worse team had a better day than him, which was Shador Sanders. Shador Sanders had an amazing day versus USC. I don't know if you guys seen that or not. But I think he's really solidifying himself in this D1 status as a very pro-dominant player because he's very active with his feet and he's not looking to be the star player, he's looking to make the big play, if you understand what I mean by that. Like, he's always setting up to throw and him getting the gurus teaching Tom Brady, that makes it even better because you can tell that he gets Tom, because he has Tom Brady stats. When you look at his stats, he has Tom Brady stats when Tom Brady retired. Like you, Tom Brady rarely had a hundred or, or two hundred yard game, and that was like a really, really bad loss when it was that. Usually, Tom Brady had like a three hundred, four hundred yard game, and sometimes you know those would be win or losses depending on you know if they could get that field goal or not. So that's kind of the same thing I'm seeing with Colorado. Where Shador is good enough to you know game manage it well enough to to get to that point and 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 I, only thing that I think of every time that I see Colorado play and why I guess I'm very envious of them is because all of that could have been Nebraska right now we could have had that promise at quarterback for the next three years two to three years because right now we're kind of lost in the wind in the sense of like we hope that these guys work out but there are no guarantees right now so that's kind of just my thought process is that we're just really everyone's really lost right now and and they don't really know what to do but hey guess what we got a long road ahead of us so now that we got done talking about that massive bundling poop death that happened last yesterday night or whatever the heck day that we recording this after the game <clears throat> we're gonna move on to the next group Okay, and I think you guys know who it is. It's that fight night. It's the fight in the line night. Okay, we're gonna come in next, and we're gonna talk about my boys, the fight in the line night, and then we're gonna close out the show. Everybody, thanks for coming in and watching us and listening to us. Welcome back, everybody. We're coming in. We're talking about our last little segment here. We're coming in talking about that fighting the line night. They're coming in and they're coming in hot. And when I say hot, that means because they're in the pits of hell right along with us at the bottom of this conference. We got two teams here, two teams with the worst records in the conference and the division, if I remember correctly. Um, we're both two and three. So, at this point, 
we're really fighting to not be the worst in the Big Ten, which is kind of not what we signed up for this for. Remember when we came out of the Big 12, we thought we were going to come in, dominate Iowa, slap around Michigan, and slap Michigan State like it was an ugly stepchild. But now it's looking like, uh uh-oh, joke's on you, Nebraska. We're the ugly stepchild. So now we got to go into a Big Ten original, Illinois, and we have to go in and show them what we're about. But, hey, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. One second here. I got a hot take for you guys because I'm going to tell you one thing. Fighting the line nine are coming in, and, and they're getting a W in their home, all right? They're going to come in, they're going to fight, and they're going to come in, and they're going to score, and I think the score is going to be 35-32. By a field goal. I don't know who their field goal kicker is, but I'm blessing them right now. It's coming down to it, and the Huskers aren't going to have the hype. Abelardo's, Ron, you ain't going to send him a burrito fast enough. But go ahead, guys. Tell me what you think. I hope, well, whoever wins is going to win their first conference game, so we'll give them that. So hopefully it's Huskers. Lewis, I don't like your prediction right now, but... I hope we score more than three, four touchdowns. But it's going to be an evenly ranked match just because we have, we both suck. So. I forget yeah. that. that I, yeah, I did just say 35 32, didn't I? Let me definitely decrease that way down lower than that. Let me say 18 21. How about that? That's a good three point spread for Nebraska because, yeah, I don't see them scoring more than two, three touchdowns. You can buy tickets for as much as you can buy an Abelardo's burrito. Uh, Larry. <laughs> Pick your poison if you want to drive. Make that drive. But Man. I, think we'll, I think we'll bounce back from that from this ass whooping. I mean, if we get our ass whooped like that against Illinois, then we don't deserve to we don't deserve to keep playing. But this will be our little break before the bye. Yeah, we get a bye week after this, so Man. this will put us in a good spot if we're three and three. Do we get a sex change week because they need to go into a different sport or some shit right now? Cause... Guess we'll see after this game. There's <laughs> <laughs> another violation. <laughs> <laughs> we're canceled we get right off of that right there. Man. The bye week is either a good thing or a really bad thing. Because if we go down in flames again, we just way too long. We might never recover, period. Free. I don't know. I think they could come in here, like Lewis said, and just destroy us. We're going there, and it's on a Friday, which means they got to travel Wait, early. Like, so, it's Friday night lights. Time, though, right? It's prime time? Yeah, it's prime time, prime like time. they always give Nebraska. Yeah, we're going to get killed. <laughs> We're as bad as we suck, we always get prime time. I'm, I'm saying it's going to be a sniper deep from the 50-yard line. Why, this is going to be the most impossible shit ever to happen. I mean, the guy, I like their receiver, Isaiah Williams. Or even worse, it's going to be somebody who you don't think is going to pop off that's been waiting to pop off. My pick is going to be uh, Reggie Love the third. He's going to be Buddy Love the third because he's going to be going nutty professor on these fools on Friday. <laughs> yeah, this guy Isaiah Williams is going to get at least six catches for 80 yards on us. Man, it, it isn't too pretty. I can say that right now. Um, I, and, and again, I don't think it's going to be like Michigan. I just think like it's going to be like those plays where players get lulled to sleep because, like, they've been running the same plays all game and stuff like that. And then they pop out with, like, a play action out of a play that they usually run on or something like that. Or pop out with, like, a swing pass or a jet sweep or something like that. And, you know, take somebody to the house because everyone was lulled to sleep. So I feel like that's kind of the thought process of, of Illinois is like, Let's come in here and punch them in the mouth with the run game and then sneak attack them to get some good touchdowns um, because, you know, that's the only way you're going to be able to, to beat uh, 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 a top-heavy team like Nebraska. Like, you know, we're, we're really big and heavy, and, yeah, we'll bang our heads with you for a good period of the game, but once we start showing our conditioning and stuff like that, 
like it's kind of all downhill from that point. Once Nebraska players get tired, there is no like another gear for them. It's just automatically downhill. So, yeah, I I I, I don't see them being prepared, especially because they got to travel early. They're gonna be in Illinois. I know a couple of the guys are actually from Illinois, which means they're gonna have family at the game, which means they're gonna have people traveling to homes and stuff like that. People aren't gonna be focused. You know, they're 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 already gonna have to play on holidays and stuff like that. So this is kind of gonna kind of be their last time seeing each other until Christmas break, because we know damn well they ain't going to no bowl game. So, <laughs> so. Again, playing on Thanksgiving, playing on possibly, I think, no, I think their games are over at the end of November, beginning of December, right? Black Friday, unless we make the Big Ten Championship game. Definitely not happening. You know where that's going. We can crash that shit like the free world did eight mile or something, but it ain't happening. We ain't D-Rabbit or or APOC on the stage or whatever his name was. (laughs) Hilarious, Clarence. That's who Nebraska is. is Clarence. Clarence. Clarence had some real nice parents. Illinois is B Rabbit up there. Got mom spaghetti on their hoodie. Ready. We just gonna back up. Doom, 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 doom. Hilarious, man. Whatever that, they allow us to come play at, we'll go yeah, in there. Yeah, where do they get the sponsors for these bowl games? Man, uh, man, we're going to be at the damn, uh, what the hell, the, the Lumi Bowl, the one where it's the, the fat bitch deodorant, because the <laughs> fat bitches can't take showers. Got the Roku on Cheetos Bowl. <laughs> Motherfuckers probably just now figuring that out. Wait, that does make sense. That is fat people sh- uh, deodorant. Yeah, that's right. That's what that is for fat ass people who can't take showers every damn day. Uh-oh. And just rub Lumi all over your fat ass bodies and smell tolerant for at least two weeks. Lulu days. lemon bowl. <laughs> Rubbed it on Nebraska's playbook to cover up all them stanky ass plays. They <laughs> that should be Nebraska's number one sponsor. Is that that Dermot, whatever the fuck she is for Lumi, sponsor Nebraska because we stink. <laughs> first N I first look. I'm spinning to my computer. First N I L deal. Lumi. <laughs> First national NIL deal. <laughs> Lumi in <and> preparation age. <laughs> the hemorrhoid bull. <laughs> Matt Rule look like a mother who get a whole bunch of hemorrhoids. <laughs> dude, you know no one got more hemorrhoids than Polini. That dude was Man. hemorrhoids on the he don't, he don't, he don't get him, Roy. Polini look like he get boils on his ass, just big <laughs> ass things that just be talking to him in his sleep and shit. His <laughs> Old school boils, them shits be diseased and shit, gangrened and shit. Damn, Bo, what the hell is that? Oh, that's just my boil. It's been there since college. <laughs> <laughs> My wife tries to lance it for me, but she's too scared. <laughs> she tries to throw a rubber band on. <laughs> no, your wife just hates you. She loves to see you in pain. That's what the truth is. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, Matt Rule looks like he uses Lumi and Preparation Age and still gets boils. <laughs> Matt or uh, Matt Rule look like Ron in the future if he get a divorce and loses political power. And <laughs> Put me in this head coach. He is, bro. He gonna hire you from this show. He be like, look, I want you to snitch out all those motherfuckers' addresses, and I'll have you be my lookalike. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> throw, some, throw some Jesper men's gray on your beard and give you a sloppier haircut, Ron. You're Matt ruling. You're Matt ruling the world. <laughs> Damn right. Already, Ron Rivera's doing good as the NFL coach. Might as well put him in as college, too. No, man, it is tied right now. You aren't lying. Look, I'm, we're in the middle of the recording. I'm up here not even paying attention to it. I'm up here paying attention to Matt Rule impersonators. But, Ryan, you could do it. So, hey, if we get famous from this show, Matt Rule, you need to let Ron stand in for you and you, like, go do some Scott Frost shit for a weekend or something. You, you're going to deserve it by the end of this season. So I don't know. I don't know if that means go get some waitress pregnant or go punch a college kid in the face or something like that. But, yeah, you need to go do some Scott Frost stuff. 100%, my friend. So, how many? What? Say that again? Whatever helps you win games, buddy. Oh, I thought you said win 10 games. I was going to say, yeah, right. He's going to say red rum before he wins 10 games. <laughs> hilarious but yeah so we'll see what happens man we're going to analyze this some more next week guys i want to thank everybody for coming in and listening to us you know it's been great um it's gonna be a rough road unfortunately nebraska has very horribly paved roads so this is going to be a bumpy trip 100 percent of the way um so we'll be back pre-game fighting the lion eyes we're gonna come in at you um i don't know we're gonna have to come in at you early so we friday night game we might have to come in at you wednesday or something we'll figure it out we'll be there you be there and guess what we'll tell you what to look out for but for right now it's your boy the wannabe college athlete f you guys the band nerd who's not a band nerd but We'll see what happens next week. Last time at band camp? Go ahead. <laughs> and the college dropout. I've been working the slave ship and I ain't making it. I wish I could. Kanye, you can't sue me. <laughs> I can now. <laughs>